did you know that it's non-fiction November? I'll be perfectly honest, non-fiction November was set up by the Federation of Children's Book Groups uh, to get children to read more non-fiction. And I thought, well, why not do some non-fiction books for adults this month? Uh, why not start with some biographies? Because I absolutely love biographies. I love reading about people and, you know, some of my favourite singers, musicians, actors, etc. It's always really, really fascinating. And they make great gifts if you've started doing your Christmas shopping. If you have friends and family who are fans of a particular person or genre, then why not think about a biography? And these biographies that I'm going to talk about are from my bookshelf. They are, they are not up and coming biographies. They're ones that I've read, um, some of them fairly recently and some of them you know, quite a long time ago, but you can still find these. And I always say, um, if you find something in a secondhand book bookshop or a charity shop or something like that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying that as a gift too, because, um, as long as it's in fairly good condition. Uh, my best friend and I often buy each other um, gifts from second-hand bookshops. And it's more about what the book is about rather than whether it's brand new and, and in pristine condition. Uh, it's far more, the subject is far more important. So here is my selection of seven biographies that I have really enjoyed and have left a lasting impact. Um, so first of all, um, you may know that I am a great fan of Charles Dickens, but I am also a great fan of uh, a non-fiction writer called Peter Ackroyd, who has written lots and lots of books on um, the history of Britain and biographies, and including his biography of Charles Dickens. I have read a lot about Charles Dickens. I've always been fascinated by his books and his life. And uh, the book by Peter Ackroyd is so well written. So some of the um, acclaim for this book from people like P.D. James is absolutely marvellous and essential book for anyone who has ever loved or read Dickens. And Anthony Burgess said, I can do no more than praise, recommend, insist that you buy and read this book. It supersedes all other Dickens biographies. There is something about Peter Ackroyd's writing that makes uh, non-fiction come to life. Um, he is so readable. This makes... Um, the life of Dickens, absolutely intriguing. Um, Dickens had a difficult childhood. Uh, his father was in and out of debtor's prison. Um, he had to go, he had to leave school. He, he so loved reading and education, but he had to leave school early to work, to earn money for his family. And he, he had this horrible job in his childhood, working in a blacking factory. Um, and of course, later on, you know, he found solace by writing and just inventing these wonderfully intriguing and lovable characters that, you know, we've all heard of, you know, so Scrooge and Fagin, and not so lovable. Um, David Copperfield. And of course, his personal life was not uh, easy. He, he was married um, and had 10 children, but his marriage uh, wasn't great. And uh, he, he did have um, an extramarital relationship with a, a, an actress, but you know, he was a human being and this uh, particular biography brings him to life like no other 
Dickens biography I've read. So if you love Charles Dickens or if you know of somebody who loves Charles Dickens, then I recommend this particular biography above all others. So that's my number one. Let's go to something completely different now. I've always loved music and uh, I'm always fascinated by uh, a lot of people who have worked in the music business. And Tom Jones uh, is one of those people who have just had success from very early on, for, you know, right through the decades from the 1960s, right up until fairly recently. And of course, um, he is one of the judges on The Voice, and um, this is an autobiography, so written by him. Uh, it's Tom Jones, Over the Top and Back. And I really enjoyed reading about Tom Jones's early life. To be honest, in the 60s, I was not particularly, I mean, I was a child in the 60s. Um, growing up in my teens and 20s, I was never a particular fan of Tom Jones. Um, but I really did come to like him when he, he kind of reinvented himself and came out with um, those songs such as Sex Bomb and um, Kiss. It was like, oh, hello. Um, suddenly I started really liking his music. So he comes across now as such a well-rounded, well-balanced uh, individual and so I bought this because I thought it would be really interesting and it really is and it tells of his early years you know he was born and grew up in Wales and he, and that's a really interesting let's have a look at some of the remarks made by the papers um, a, the Sunday Telegraph, a great read and funny, filled with anecdotes and encounters with Elvis, Paul McCartney and John Lennon. This makes me laugh on the voice because he's always name dropping all the people he met in his career. Uh, Daily Express says, riotously enjoyable, a classic working class hero. Packed with the kind of showbiz tales you don't get anymore. A terrific star-studded journey. Yes, indeed, it is. And uh, so, if, for those of you who are great Tom Jones fans, or if you know somebody, you know, somebody who used to love him back in the 60s, maybe, um, and hasn't read this, then that's a good read. My next choice is a biography about a writer that was very, very close to my heart when I was a child. Uh, he wrote some of my favourite children's fantasy books. And if you've watched my videos before, you probably know that I'm talking about C.S. Lewis. And this is uh, a biography of C.S. Lewis by A.N. Wilson. Now, A.N. Wilson, I know as um, a very renowned history writer because when I was doing my open university degree, my main subjects were history and literature, um, A.N. Wilson was required reading. But he is, uh, so this is why I, when I saw this book, I sort of <laughs> pounced on it. Uh, C.S. Lewis... Uh, was born in Ireland, as you probably know, um, Northern Ireland. We tend to know him as, very much as a, a Christian writer. Now, I'm not uh, religious, um, but that doesn't really matter. It, uh, a lot of his writing still has um, a poignancy and a relevance. If, you are not Christian or if you are spiritual. Uh, but interestingly, his conversion to Christianity was quite unwilling. It, that, that was an interesting part of this um, that I, I did not know about. And of course, it talks about uh, his adult life where um, he began to write and his great friendship with J.R.R. Tolkien and their... Uh, 
membership of a group called the Inklings that used to meet in Oxford. Um, and of course, his great love, his wife, uh, Joy. Um, I also read some time ago um, a book he wrote called Surprised by Joy, which was kind of autobiography, and that's a good read too if you come across it. I it was a, an aunt who lent that to me, so I don't actually have that book anymore, but um, look out for that one too if you have an interest in C.S. Lewis. Um, so praise for this book, um, The Guardian. Um, it seems fitting that A.N. Wilson should now have written the definitive biography of Lewis and it is a superb job. Wilson's book outshines them all. It is continuously funny as well as touching. It understands its subject perfectly and it has just the right degree of sympathy and scepticism for what Lewis evangelised and believed. Very interesting. C.S. Lewis. Next, uh, another autobiography, one you've probably seen and heard of, uh, and it's about one of my favourite singer-songwriters of all time. I have been a lifelong fan of this man, and it is Me by Elton John. And I love that cover too. It's just a brilliant cover. Dog's just arrived. If, like me, you love Elton John or you know of somebody oh. who does, then this is a brilliant autobiography about his life and, of course, his early days um, of trying to get uh, songs published to start with and then his early days writing with uh, Bernie Taupin in his bedroom in his, his parents house in Pinner in, in North London um, you know right through and it's a very um, open and honest account of the years of his drug addiction he, he went through a really difficult time and, um, you know, it's always difficult to remind ourselves, you know, when we see somebody having so much fame. Yeah, he, he is one of the most famous people alive and, um, you know, we always tend to think of them as having a great life. But, you know, it's just not always the case. And this is a, a really brilliant account of um, how he managed to get through that and come out the other side. And, of course, um, all of his work with um, his AIDS charity and all the stuff he has done for charity and his relationship with David Furnish, of course. And I just absolutely love this book from start to finish because I just love every single um, song that Elton John has produced. That's absolutely true. I cannot think of one song that I don't actually like of Elton John's. But apart from that, he's also a bit of a hero for me because I I, I just think he has been so incredibly brave. And um, to come through what he came through and and also, you know, what he's done for um, for AIDS charities, um, for the aid communities um he's had many losses in his life many friends lost to aids um he had a close friendship with princess diana and uh so it really is an intriguing read uh, so one of the things it says on the front is um, me is full of drama from the early rejection of Elton's work with songwriting partner Bernie Taupin to spinning out of control as a chart topping superstar from friendships with John Lennon, Freddie Mercury and George Michael to disco dancing with the Queen from suicide attempts to a secret drug addiction that would grip him for over a decade. Um, and at the bottom, joyously funny, entertaining and at times deeply moving. Me will take you on an intimate journey with a living legend. He really is a living legend and long may he be so. So that is a real excellent recommendation from me. Me by Elton John. 
Yeah, Tilly has joined me because she cannot bear it when I'm sitting talking to the camera. Um, she thinks, you know, I should be talking to her instead. So just say hello, Tilly. Yes, I'm talking about biographies. There aren't any dog biographies. Sorry about that. <laughs> Next on my list is um, a biography about one of my favourite uh, actors actresses of the golden age of Hollywood. Um, I absolutely love this person and this is um, called it's Kate remembered and it's called and it's about Catherine Hepburn and it's by A. Scott Berg. Now it's an interesting biography because A. Scott Berg met Catherine Hepburn when she was well, I think probably um, was in the 80s so she was pretty old she was in her I think 70s or 80s um, by that point and they and he was just 35 he met her as a biographer and they formed this really close friendship um, so this is an intriguing tale of their friendship and of her um, life and career and it's based on hours and hours of conversations that he had with Catherine, Catherine Hepburn. And I love this photograph of Catherine Hepburn. Isn't she the most beautiful woman ever? She was in her 80s when that photograph was taken. She never had any uh, cosmetic surgery of any sort done. I've always loved her films. One of my favourite films of that era is The Philadelphia Story, um, which also starred two more of my favourite actors from that period, Cary Grant and James Stewart. And if you don't know The Philadelphia Story, you may have heard of the, the musical called High Society, which uh, was with Bing Crosby and uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, where it's, it's the same story but made into a musical but the Philadelphia story is um, not a musical and um, with those three wonderful people and it's just as good if not even better than High Society so if you've never seen Philadelphia uh, if you've never seen it do have a look it's one of my favourite films but anyway I digress if you're interested in finding in a really good um, accurate biography about this wonderful, um, very strong, um, intelligent woman who did not conform to uh, some of the restrictions, let's say, uh, that Hollywood did tend to impose on its women actors. Um, I love her. Um, she's a bit of a kind of, I suppose, a bit of a hero of mine. And of course, um, it goes into her um, very well-known relationship with Spencer Tracy uh, as well, um, as well as her early uh, childhood years. Um, let's see. Um, the Sunday Telegraph says the great thing about this book is that it undoubtedly increases your affection for this marvellous actress. And uh, Times Literary Review, the book is tender and perceptive. Berg gives us a vivid sketch of a complex, difficult, charismatic woman. There you go. So for anyone who loves those older films, that's a really great read. Now, here's a book for any of you who are or were fans of the Monty Python series. Uh, you'll have to excuse the condition of this. I don't know how it's got like that. But these are, it's not so much a biography, but a, a publication of the diaries of Michael Palin. Um, I think Michael Palin is probably my favourite Python. He's he, he's such a, a lovely, intelligent, talented man. And he, you know, I loved watching his 
uh, travel shows that he he did in uh, probably nineties, early noughties. Um, such a um, a lovely, charming man, and just as a matter of interest, my mother, who um, uh, she now uh, has dementia, and she's in a care home, but she was an artist, and she heard that Michael Palin was very interested in the arts and she wrote to him once and he so kindly and graciously wrote back to her very interested in her um, work as an artist and sadly she didn't carry on because she was just starting to uh, deteriorate mentally um, but I, I thought that was so lovely of him to write back to somebody who was completely un <clears throat> completely unknown so um Let's get back to this. The, he's published several um, volumes of his diaries, and they are extensive. And these are the ones from 1969 to 1979. So very much the Monty Python years. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually called the Python years. You can't get down and then start groan, uh, moaning at me again. No, you can't. And just dipping into this randomly it's just full of little sort of wonderfully uh, interesting and intriguing mundane details uh, for example um monday march the 5th this is 1973 a python meeting at terry's the first time since the third lp in september that we have all contributed to a creative enterprise in this case the second python film it was in many ways like a typical Python working day. Graham arrived late and Terry made the coffee. And there was the usual indecision over whether to have a small lunch in or a blowout at one of Camberwell's few restaurants. We even played touch football on the lawn for the weather is mild and sunny. <laughs> it's just for, and, um, don't you just love sort of seeing those little sort of day to day details of somebody that you really are interested in. Uh, I remember very much absolutely loving Monty Python. Um, I remember my brother and I, I think it was every Thursday night and we were there on the sofa with the television on every Thursday night to watch Monty Python's Flying Circus. It was so innovative, so new, so different, so silly. <laughs> and we absolutely loved it. So yeah, good, great for anybody who loved Monty Python or just um, Michael Palin as a, uh, he's been an actor and uh, obviously the presenter of travel programmes. He's one of those all-rounders. Um, so these volumes of diaries are a great, intriguing and interesting read. So one more, and you know that from a past video that I'm a big fan of Shakespeare and... There are plenty of biographies of Shakespeare, even though we don't actually know that much about him. There are oh, years in Shakespeare's life that are completely undocumented uh, in any way at all. So biographies of Shakespeare are not that easy. But the one I've read, um, it's quite an old one. It's published in nine. <laughs> it's, pub <laughs> it's published in nineteen eighty eight. And it's by, um, here we go, it's The Life and Times of William Shakespeare by Peter Levi. Um, now, I don't know if Peter Levi is still with us, but he was at the time the uh, Oxford Professor of Poetry and a Fellow of St Catherine's College, a distinguished writer, poet and critic. Um, and I've really enjoyed this book. Um, when you just read what it says in the front, this is the first biography of William Shakespeare since the Victorian age to pay full attention to his life and times, to his works and to the numerous and subtle connections between them. Um, it's really a fascinating read because he really does go into how um, the works of Shakespeare, each, each one he goes into um, and how it relates to um, the period, 
Shakespeare's own relationships and oh, yeah. <laughs> the reason she's woofing at me is because it's lunchtime and she always gets a, a special treat at lunchtime and she's telling me it's one o'clock you will just have to wait it is full of quotes and interesting as as that um preface said interesting connections um in his works with the history of the times um the elizabethan age um and i love that because one of the things i you know was learnt when i was at um the, my open university course is how art um whether it's writing music uh, etc is always linked to the time that it's written in so you cannot separate uh the, the history of a person um from the times uh that they lived in and the mores and um social background uh of that time and uh, of course when we look at particular let's say the histories we have to for example remember um if we criticize shakespeare for painting richard the third as a villain we also have to remember that he was writing in the time of elizabeth the first who was a tudor and it was the tudors who defeated richard the third and it was pretty dangerous to say anything that seemed to go against or criticize the monarchy of the time so we cannot criticize shakespeare for painting richard the third as a villain because he was writing to please elizabeth the first who did see his plays so that's one interesting thing we should remember about shakespeare and of course all that comes into this wonderful book that i have really enjoyed reading so if you do love shakespeare if you know somebody who loves shakespeare do get this or any other william shakespeare biography it's a fascinating read of a fascinating man and that's it for now. There are so many more biographies I could talk about because, as I say, I absolutely love reading about people that I am interested in. And it's they are my favourite non-fiction genre of book. I may do another video later this month on history books as another non-fiction November um, genre um so do subscribe if you would like to find out more i'll be doing more book reviews and themed lists and books for christmas coming up so stay subscribed and i'll see you again shortly bye for now